Hello and welcome to this undergraduate skills video where we are going to learn about various basic laboratory calculations which will be extremely useful as you progress through your degree. Now, why do you need to know about these calculations? Well, it will allow you to analyse scientific data and once it has been analysed, you can then start to understand it and once you understand it, you can start to draw conclusions on what the data might show. So without further ado, in this particular video, we're going to focus on the mean absolute deviation. For this, you will need to understand what the arithmetic mean and normal distribution are. Therefore, I'd advise you watch the associated video before continuing. So before we look at the mean absolute deviation, or MAD for short, we need to look at two things. What we mean by the term absolute and what we mean by the term deviation. So first we have the term absolute, which in this context relates to absolute numbers. Now absolute numbers are non-negative numbers, which is to say all absolute numbers are positive, and therefore to convert a number to an absolute number we remove the negative prefix. So as an example, if we have the equation 1 minus 10, the absolute number answer would be 9, because we complete the desired sum of 1 minus 10, which is negative 9, and then convert this into a non-negative equivalent number, which is positive 9. And the reason why we remove any negatives is that it allows us to determine how far a number is from 0 without the complexity of dealing with direction and negative values. So now that we know what an absolute number is, we can start to understand what the mean absolute deviation of a data set is. So on a very basic level, deviation is a term we use to describe the difference between an individual data value and the mean value of the data set. And to just visualise this, here we can see two data points in yellow and the deviation is the numerical difference between the data value and the mean value. And if we bring in what we know about absolute numbers, we don't really care if this deviation is below the mean or above the mean, just that there is a deviation in the data. So now that we know what deviation is, how do deviations and absolute numbers relate to the term mean absolute deviation? Well, it's a statistical value relating to the average absolute deviation between each data value of a data set and the mean value of that data set. And what it does is it gives us an idea on how dispersed the data values are within a data set and the variability of the data. Now one final point to note before we move on, we should only determine the mean absolute deviation on data that is normally distributed, where the data follows a bell-shaped distribution with data values closer to the mean occurring more frequently than those that deviate further from the mean. Okay, so now that we know these key bits of information, let's look at how we calculate the mean absolute deviation using the following equation. So essentially, the mean absolute deviation is the sum of our data values minus the mean of the data values, so essentially the deviation away from the mean, which is converted to absolute values divided by the number of data values used. Now to help make sense of this equation, we're going to calculate the mean absolute deviation of two example data sets. So in our first example, we have a student who is counting the number of monocytes in a patient's blood sample using a microscope and hemocytometer. During their first count, they note 235 monocytes per microliter of blood. To try and increase the accuracy of their data, they perform repeat counts on different blood samples from the same patient, noting 204, 214, 256 and 251 monocytes per microliter. Following this experimental counting, the student calculates the mean to be 232 and now wants to know how dispersed their data is, i.e. what is the mean absolute deviation of monocytes per microliter. Now to achieve this, they can bring up our mean absolute deviation equation, which we can now populate with all of the information from our example. So x minus x bar becomes our data values minus the mean data value, repeated for each data value, and n becomes the number 5 as this is the number of data values we are observing. Now we can start to simplify this equation by calculating everything in brackets on the top line of the equation. And once we've done this, we still have some work to do, but before we can continue simplifying the top line of the equation, all values need to be converted to absolute values, 
So our 3, 24 and 19 will remain the same, but our minus 28 and minus 18 become positive 28 and positive 18. This then allows us to add up each of the numbers on the top line of the equation, giving us a value of 92, which can then be divided by 5, which is the number of data observations made. This gives the student a mean absolute deviation of 18.4, or more specifically, 18.4 monocytes per microliter. Now, interpretation of this number can be difficult, but in general terms, the lower the value, the less variable the data is. Basically, the data values are similar to one another with smaller differences between them. On the flip side, a higher value means the data is more variable, i.e. the data values are more spread out with larger differences between them. Now, I would like to just point out here that if we didn't use absolute values in the calculation and remove all of the negatives, a single large negative deviation could reduce the mean absolute deviation close to zero or even below it, suggesting there is no deviation in our samples, which as we know by just looking at the data would be incorrect. Okay, so let's look at a second example. Here we have a second student who is repeating the same experiment but with a different patient's blood sample. This student was a bit slower in the lab and only managed to complete four cell counts, identifying 180, 217, 250 and 281 monocytes per microliter. Following on from this experimental counting, the student calculated the mean to be 232 and now wants to know how dispersed their data is i.e. what is the mean absolute deviation of monocytes per microliter. And just like our previous example, we are going to calculate the mean absolute deviation using the following equation, which we can now populate with all of the information from our example. So x minus x bar becomes our data value minus the mean data value repeated for each data value and n becomes the number 4 as this is the number of data values observed. Now again, we can start simplifying this equation by calculating everything in the brackets on the top line of the equation. Now we still have some work to do before we can continue simplifying the top line of the equation because all our values need to be converted into absolute values. So our 18 and 49 will remain the same, but our minus 52 and minus 15 become positive 52 and positive 15. This then allows us to add up each of the numbers on the top line of the equation, giving us a value of 134. Now this can be divided by 4, which is the number of data observations made, giving the student a mean absolute deviation of 33.5, or more specifically, 33.5 monocytes per microliter. Now you might actually notice something here. If we compare the mean absolute deviation of the data generated by student 2 in our second example to that by student 1 in our first example, we can see they differ from one another with the mean absolute deviation value of student 2's data almost double that of student 1, despite having the same calculated mean values. And if we bring up the raw data for each of these data sets, we can see that for the first example, the cell counts are closer to the mean, resulting in a lower mean absolute deviation value. Basically, they are less dispersed and there is less deviation. On the flip side, however, the cell counts for the second student in our second example are further from the mean, resulting in a higher mean absolute deviation value and that basically means they are more dispersed and there is more deviation in our data. Now just as a very quick comparison, if we didn't convert our values to absolute numbers in our examples, the mean absolute deviation for both students would be zero, suggesting no deviation in the data set, and all values would be equal to 232, which we know to be incorrect from the raw data. Essentially, we don't care if the deviation is above or below, just that there is deviation in our values away from the mean value. And that's essentially why, in the context of the mean absolute deviation, absolute numbers are used. And with that, we come to the end of this basic laboratory calculations video. Hopefully, you found this content useful and easy to understand. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I hope you have a great day.